So with Bandai's new 172nd scale transforming VF1 Valkyrie kit, I figured the best way to take everybody through this whole uh, experience is to kind of just show you the transformation. Although I will get a couple things out of the way first. This is a very pleasant build. It's definitely uh, up to the quality of uh, Master Raid kits as far as the act of putting it together, you know. Most things go together pretty well. There's a couple of pins in there. I'll tell you uh, just what you need to know about all the metal pins in a second. Okay, so we're going to transform this thing into gear walk mode. First thing we're going to do is we're going to retract all the landing gear and watch as stuff falls off. Uh, one of the problems with this kit, and again, build quality is pretty good, but engineering wise, somebody got drunk with power from the real gear grade line. So you have tons of little tiny tabs that have to get sandwiched between things, and these are like tiny, tiny tabs. So with the landing gear, it does have internal landing gear, unlike the Bandai uh, VF25 kits. You just kind of flip it down, and each of the doors is on a little sliding joint. You can kind of see when I push these, you actually kind of push them in. And you just put this one down, and hopefully that'll all stay in place there. And I'm just going to try to fit this thing in here, and hope it stays on. Okay. Front gear is pretty easy. Just flip down the tow bar and put this down. Put this in. You can see this is how they push in. Just like that. I gotta say, I could have done without internal landing gear. It's not really that necessary <laughs> on a model kit. Alright, so you can see here it is in fighter mode with all the stuff out. And we're going to continue into gear walk mode and hope stuff doesn't fall off. Start off with the tail fins. You fold this tail fin down and you actually push these in. They actually slide inward on their joint. Both of them do. And you can see that it's actually moving inward. And this one can come up and it also slides just a little bit inward. And as you bring this up, there's going to be a soft click in here. I don't know if you could hear that, but there's a soft click that kind of keeps this in place. And also you're going to want to retract that little fin in the back there and flip this thing out and hope it doesn't fall off. You kind of have to keep the backpack from trying to undo itself. Now one of the things that Bandai really brought to the table that hadn't been done before with uh, VF1 toys and both model kits was the inclusion of the screen accurate leg transformation. So essentially what happens is that you bring the leg up, you know, kind of similar to how you do it on the other kit, on other toys and kits, but they actually do have a little panel right in here, and this whole thing comes out. And this is for when you go all the way to, uh, to batteroid mode, because this will bring the leg down to where it needs to go. And we're just going to do the same thing on the other side. Basically, you untab this from the back here, and watch as the whole thing falls off. This is supposed to detach, because that's how the VF1 actually transforms, is these things, basically these go all the way down, and then they plug into the nose, and you know, that all works there. Um, yeah, so you can kind of see how that works there. Alright, I'm going to take a quick break, and I'm going to show you how you do the whole arms and stuff like that. Alright, I removed the legs just to keep them out of the way for now while we go through and do the arm transformation. So actually I'm going to put these back while I'm here. You can see this whole thing is on a little couple of hinges and an extending piston joint, which is cool. I would actually say this is one of the best things that this kit does, because um, this whole part actually works quite smoothly. It's just the fact that uh, the things it is forced to work with, like the legs and the hip joints, are terrible. All right, so to get the arms out, what you're going to do, a little different than most VF1s, you actually slide the back plate uh, back instead of the front. So this whole thing is going to start to I unlock it. See, that actually slides back. It's not the front plate this time. And uh, we're going to take, I'll get the gun out there. I'll deal with that in a little bit. And we're just going to move this and get the arms out. And you can kind of see the arms are, once again, on little hinges. Simple hinge, just a swivel. 
swivel, and then out. I find that this thing gets in the way. This is the bracket that keeps the arms in place. So I just kind of move them forward while I have all this space in here, and then do that. And actually, right now, I'm going to try to bring the shoulder pauldron up so it can move. Similar to the Yamato toy, the later Yamato toys, this actually does move up so it can move around a bit. And when you, okay, actually, you can actually see right here, there's the canopy cover. That's going to be come and play when we go to, to Batteroid mode. Okay, so we're going to bring this all back together. Again, you can see that this whole thing slides in. So remember to keep the shoulder hinges above this white part here. And I uh, hope stuff doesn't start to fall apart. <laughs> that seems to be the thing with this kit. Just hope things don't fall apart as you're transforming it. All right, so that should be pretty good. I'm gonna put this down and start working on the legs. All right, so the, the upper body is about good. We're gonna work on the legs here. Now with the legs, the way you do this is you're gonna start to bring out uh, these joints here. And I found it's actually kind of hard to get this one out. There's a little tab right there, so you can kind of try to work it with your uh, fingernail. But I'm just going to use a nail clipper, just the end right there, so you can pull, basically just pull this out, the whole ankle assembly right here, and then you just open up the, the feet. There's some nice detail in there. They have the little turbine in the back there, and the burner or whatever that is. And you also just got to pull this thing up and pull this hole out and you can just put that back down and that gives you a lot more space to move this whole leg joint here and you can see it's got the full range of joints in here you know you got your gear walk joint you got your knee joint there's a little bit of a swivel here just because of how this goes together it's basically a long pole that has a keyed on the end and that's how you insert it and uh, you can kind of see, it's not too easy to see, but this middle panel in the leg is actually meant to kind of raise up just a bit. Also, if you fiddle with this flap here, kind of raises up a bit, although sometimes I feel like it's just going to come off. But yeah, also this panel is here, so you can get a better bend with the ankle joint. So, yeah. Also, I'm here. Um, the only things that are actually really colored on this is a couple of uh, red parts and uh, red parts, black parts, and gray parts, and obviously all the white. These are all stickers. That's actually color molded. This is color molded, and this is color molded. And these are two separate parts, and they actually do look fairly seamless. You can't really tell that there's a gap between them. Yeah, that actually works pretty well. But there's not a lot of color molding on this figure. Definitely not as much as on um, your typical like master grade kit. I think a lot of that is just due to the fact that. This thing is small and has to have a lot of little mechanisms on it. So I'm just going to do this really quickly. One thing that people have said is kind of weird is that the, the kneecap doesn't really like sink in. It doesn't, it's not like connected like right down here like it is on the Yamato toys. It's all the way up here. And I think the reason for that is so you can actually use this to kind of support the upper body in gear walk mode. It doesn't look great. But, you know, I kind of see why they're doing it. So I'm just kind of dealing with that. All right, so we're going to finish this off just by sticking these back on. And you can see there's just a little T-shaped, you can kind of see, T-shaped connector in there. And you just kind of have to hope that everything got properly uh, put in there as you're pushing it in. It's not a bad connection, it's just not super great for what it needs to do. Alright, make sure I line that up right. Okay. That looks good. And just kind of mess around with the arms to get them in the right place. And just to do some cleanup to make it look better. That's all you can really hope for here. All right, so um, with the gun pod, the gun pod actually has this big adapter piece uh, that's for going on to the this little indent on the arms right here. 
and you just take this thing off, open it up. It's also a little thing right here. That's for attaching the gun, the uh, strap. So we'll get to the strap in a bit. But a word on hands. So you've got pair of uh, articulated hands, and these are really just for holding the gun. Uh, the only fixed posed hands you get is uh, one splayed hand for the left side and one saluting hand for the right side. So you don't actually get like a nice um, fixed posed hand for holding the gun, so you always have to deal with these kind of not great articulated hands because they're very small and that's not good. I kind of wonder why somebody bound I decided to do that because in a lot of their uh, other small like Gundam kits like the F91 even a lot of the real grade kits they actually do give you just nice fixed posed hands for holding like weaponry and all that. So I'm just going to deal with the, the fixed posed hand on this side. Um, they're actually you don't have to take the hands off or at least not the articulated hands you can sort of you can attempt to stuff them inside here. You can't do that with the uh, fixed post hand, but you can do that with the articulated hands. You probably don't want to because um, those, these uh, articulated hands I'd like to fall apart very easily. They're not very hardy. They do have like moving, the same idea, moving trigger finger. Thumb that's on a ball joint, but they're not great. They don't even like really actually grip the, the whole handle of the gun pod either. So not too good. And so also one last thing, we've got the strap for the gun pod. I thought this was going to be like rubbery plastic, but it's not. It's just kind of hard plastic, which uh, gets bent as you attach it. So I probably should have done that first, but uh, yeah, let's see if we can do this while we're... Actually, let's, let's come back to the, the gun pod attachment, because uh, this guy feels like he's going to fall over. All right, we got the strap attached to the gun pod, and we're going to continue on into batteroid mode, which means I'm going to take the gun off again. Well, I'm going to take the hand that has the gun in it off, because that'll make it easier. All right, so here's the big main event, transforming this thing into batteroid mode. The first thing we have to do, which breaks the perfect transformation rule, is we're going to go and we're going to lift up, attempt to lift up, this flap that's on the nose and it's kinda hard to do especially on camera alright so with this flap here there's a little piece you take out this little part right there and that's going to expose the cavity for which you're going to attach the hip joints so this actually slides in and out as you can see before it actually does rotate when it's all the way in like that, but when you slide it out, you can tilt the nose up and down, and that gives you a bit of a pelvis joint. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so as we move on, I'm going to leave that open and try to do this as best as we can on camera. I'm going to move back to the wings. Now with the wings, again, like most VF1 kits, they just kind of move in, but the cool thing about it is that these actually retract a little bit. They go in a little bit. And that's how you make them just a little bit shorter for batteroid mode. Alright, so we're going to do what we did the other time in gearwalk mode. We're going to bring this whole thing back. And uh, how much as that thing falls off, I know what that is. And uh, this is all starting to come apart, but you can kind of see. Now the whole chest area starts to come up and uh, I'll dislodge <laughs> anyway, I'm going to dislodge the legs while they're here and also their delivery panels. Alright, so this whole thing comes up and you can see there's actually a big hinge right in there. That's where the largest pin is used. The smallest pin is used in the backpack. So if you're building this and you're like, where do all these pins go? Large pin goes in here, small pin goes in there. Medium sized pins go everywhere else. That's the one you get the most of. So you start to kind of bring this thing forward and this whole thing. The uh, canopy cover, which is also a color molded part, will slide, or it should, start to slide down. And uh, kind of have to work the head through as well as you're doing this. Kind of massage that and that'll come through. 
Yeah. Not as smooth as it could be. A lot of the problems are just the fact that, you know, the VF-1 is a fairly small airplane. You know, the kit, the kit's fairly large. I mean, it's like eight inches long in fighter mode, but trying to fit all that crap on the in inside while you're making a model kit just means that uh, things aren't going to work out too well. Okay, that's got out. Let's see if I can't wiggle this all back into place. Alright, so that's down like it's supposed to be. And uh, I need to pause this again to get this thing ready to show you the magic of the leg delivery panels. Alright, so with the legs, uh, what you want to do is you want to pull out this thing. This is the hip joint. And the hip joint, you want the longest part facing this way, because that's what's going to go into the nose cone. And the same thing on this side. All right, again, longest side facing down. And uh, I'll, I'm just going to show you on one leg the whole idea here. And this is actually something that is in the show. It was in since the very first episode, but it's a detail that is often uh, omitted when they're showing the transformation. It is in the line art, so if you're familiar with any like design works book, it's there. So this whole thing, this whole big panel right here, comes out and delivers the leg down to the nose where it plugs in. So that's how it works, or how it's supposed to work in the show. And then when you're done, or when it's done, you know, the leg is in there and then this whole panel retracts, comes back. So this is basically how it's it's done. Um, it's just really there for the novelty on this kit. I do like the fact that they do it, because it hasn't been done before. And uh, in some ways it's probably the best thing about the kit, but the problem that happens is that you start to deal with this part, where it plugs in. These do not plug in very solidly, unfortunately, as, as much as you can try to get them in there, or you can try to squeeze this thing in there, you would have to beef this up with some glue or something just to thicken the whole area. Maybe it's like that so you thicken it with paint as you paint the thing, but I didn't paint the thing, so that's the problem. So you can kind of see that's how that works. As we finish off the batteroid mode, um, what happens is these panels, or the leg delivery panels, they actually stay out a little bit. And uh, what they do is they rest above this tab right here. This is the tab the, the back of the legs go into in fighter mode. They don't rest, like, they don't go on this tab, they just go above it. So that as everything gets put in place, as you kind of work the, uh, also work the mid hinges a bit so they rest up above, kind of like that. So that all rests in place like that. Same thing on this side, that hinge is going to rest above in that area right there. These things are just going to hang back here and sort of try to help you keep the thing together. Doesn't really do that, and also now this thing is coming apart again. So yeah, I'm going to pause it again, fix this guy up so he can stand, <laughs> and we will come back. Alright, so here's the Bondi kit in uh, Batteroid mode. I'm not going to do a lot of posing right now because this thing is a delicate affair when you pose it because as you saw the hips tend to come apart. Um, I, I appreciate having that actual joint in there because the idea is that you can pose the nose a bit forward and then you can actually bend the upper leg all the way. Uh, I, could, I could try. No, I don't want to try it. Anyway. <laughs> uh, there's a couple of joints they do add that most kits don't have. You probably, if you ever built a uh, Asagawa Batteroid. You can see it actually has a little tilt joint like right at the bottom of the intake. And so that gives it a little, actually it doesn't really give it that much more articulation. It kind of just makes it for the fact that there's not a lot of side to side movement in the hips right here. So that doesn't really work that well. And the feet are okay. It's um not great. I like the arms. They're pretty basic. I mean, they're pretty basic. They work pretty well. Uh, you know, you've got a joint here, you have a joint up here, a full double joint and a swivel. So that all works pretty well. Next, all right, there's a double ball in there. 
Uh, head lasers move, of course, and on the VF1S head, all the individual lasers are on a little gimbal, so they actually can move a bit. If you remember episode 27 of the TV series when Hikaru makes his Valkyrie draw a figure eight, or about, he draws a circle on a figure eight with the, the lasers, that's what they're supposed to do right there. They move by themselves. It does come with a uh, VF1A head. Unfortunately, I misplaced the um, little camera that goes in there, which is clear anyway, so I was going to cover it with the sticker they give you. But I can't get it because they only give you one double ball to connect the, the neck part, and I'm using it in there. So it's like, oh, thanks. But I can't actually get it to work on this one anyway, so it's like, um, am I missing a part or something? But yeah, that's a bit of a loss. So, um, it kind of works a little bit. You can see it's got the, the waist joint right there. I'm afraid it's just going to fall just by looking at it. So yeah, overall this kit, a lot of things it does I like. I like how this is all a lot of consolidation in the whole chest area here. Like, for example, these shoulder hinges are actually on the other hinges that um, fold the whole airplane in half. Uh, I like the leg delivery panel thing. I think that works pretty well. Just what happens with them afterwards is kind of lazy and doesn't work. Um, the hip connector is terrible. The legs are kind of more complicated than they need to be. And uh, yeah, overall, it's just like good ideas, just they have to work in conjunction with a lot of bad ideas. Um, the thing with the leg remover, with a leg delivery panel is that that was sort of what these guys were doing, the old Yamato. If you remember, this guy has the, the leg that just comes out. And uh, that was what they were trying to do, just without actually having that panel in there. So yeah, uh, this is still better than that though. <laughs> Oddly enough. As far as people saying it's like, are these a good replacement, like a cheaper replacement for the Yamato you know, Arcadia uh, transforming 160th scale figures? No, these are not. They're a little too fragile. They're not even really up to the same level as uh, Bandai's like Master Grade Zeta Gundam, the, the 2.0 or their Zeta Plus kits. At least those stay together in both of their modes. This is just, it's too, like the VF one's too small. Making it 172nd scale makes it a little too small to have all those intricate details. So this is just kind of, eh. Might have worked if it was bigger, but I don't think they wanted to make a 148th scale kit, <laughs> which would have been the next size up. It just kind of was a little fun. Here's the original EMI kit. This is the Bandai reissue. So this is the only transforming VF1 that existed before this guy, as far as like regular plastic model kits go. Yeah, he, he was okay. You know, you had to remove the whole nose to make it transform and swap it out with the other, the one with the visible pilot. But yeah, this thing is also glued within an inch of its life, because it's supposed to be, because it's an old kit. But yeah, this is actually sturdier than this, believe it or not. And I built this thing back when it came out in 1997, where the reissue came out in 1997. That kit's from 1983 or 82. So anyway, uh, it's not the greatest kit. It's sort of like they had some. Somebody had to start somewhere with making a new VF1 kit, but this is just not exceptional. If you want to see the full review, please go to collectiondx.com. The link is going to be in the show notes. And I guess I'm supposed to say like, comment, subscribe, because uh, I sure can talk about Macross figures. Because I've got, you know, tons and tons of Macross figures. I don't even like the VF1 that much. <laughs>